Shalom, giving all praise to Yahweh, Basham, Al Shah, Basham, Makaku, Dash, Shalom to the 144,000 and hopefully, hopeful elect out there on the rest of the elect. Shalom to you all. Anyway, this shouldn't be too long of a video, <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to title this video The Bantu People and the People of Ibu. Some people say Igbo, Ibu, are Israelites. And you have some writers and scholars that say the Ibu, the Igbo is a funny way of saying uh, Hebrew. So here's an article right here. So what I did was I uh, typed in the Dibantu people uh, speak Hebrew. So here's an article that popped up among many. So, I, you know, I, I um, said, so let me click on this article right here. So I'm going to read, so I'm going to just, I'm not going to read the whole article, but uh, it's nice and long. Anyway, it says here, the Bantu, oh, I remember years ago, this was maybe 26, 2018, could be 2017, 2019. It was long before the, uh, the, uh, the ragamuffin, you know, y'all know what I mean by that. With the J, the, the the jump shot. Anyway, uh, might have been twenty seventeen. Um, uh, vocab Malone had did a video, and he had said, uh, he said, "You guys are not the Israelites." He said, "Well, why don't you just want? How about maybe y'all the band two people?" So I did a little research on the band two people, and it connected me to. You know, Hebrew, you know, being Hebrews that they spoke Hebrew. Now, you know what I'm going to do? Let me do this. Uh, let me do this here. Okay, so this is uh, GMS Tanzania. What well, shall I want to the, the brother out there? And he puts, he comes on my, my uh, comment, you know, puts comments on my page and so forth. So he actually lives in Tanzania. He identifies himself as being an Israelite. So in this video, I mentioned, this is the video, uh, the interview that um, Bishop Nathaniel did in South Africa with the bishop, I forget the other the guy's name, but he's famous out there in Africa, especially South Africa. And it was a part two. I was watching some of it. I said it. I, I said the, it was. A, it was a complete waste of time. It didn't go nowhere. It didn't go nowhere because the guy, he, you know, you know, he he so called commanded the the interview. You know, he he likes to talk, and they were talking about uh things not really in the scriptures. I. I you know, Bishop Nathaniel was trying to get into the scripture thing, but this guy was looking at things more of a political, you know, the people coming together, building a com community. So it didn't it didn't register with this guy at all. It, di it didn't register with this guy at all. So here, so when I made the comment that, you know, we're the Israelites and we spoke Hebrew, it, Jay, I think I mentioned, I think I actually mentioned the Bantu people actually speak Hebrew. When they greet each other, they say, uh, sh uh, they say Shalama. Now, there was a video that a, a Jake chick from America, she, I guess she visited the West Africa. She went, she, she went among the uh, Bantu people and she said, made a video. She said that when they greet each other, they say Shal Shalama. 
Then she had a couple other words that were actual Hebrew that the Bantu pe people speak. All right, so so the brother put the comment in. Mayim or Mayam, Mayim is water. That's Hebrew for water. The word water in the Hebrew is Mayam. The word heaven or heavens is the word Shemayam. The, sh the prefix Sha pretty much is like pertaining to waters. So the word heaven, Shemayam, is actually uh, pertaining to waters or waters. And then he also puts in uh, Salah, right, Salah. She said Salama instead of Shalama. She said Salama, that's peace. So this man from Tanzania, so he lives in the African continent. So I'll do a little bit of reading in this on this article. I'll leave the link in the description box. It said the Bantu languages are dialects of ancient Hebrew. Now you could say, well, we don't know who this, who the writer of this article is, and they just making it up. Okay, well, it's there. You know, somebody's talking about, you know, the people of West, mainly West West Africa, Israelites. But the descendants of Israelites it even speaks about 70 AD, which is down here. Like I said, I'm not going to read the, the whole. Uh, it's a nice long article. Um, I'm right about here. In the days of the apostles, Jews around the world still understand and spoke Hebrew by evidence of Thomas in India singing a song in Hebrew. So you had Israelites in India that only he and a Hebrew woman there could understand since it, since it was her language as well. So this is uh, the book of Acts of, Th Acts of Thomas, which is not a part of the original scriptures. So, you know, we don't know how, how accurate this is, but it could be part of the history. After the after the scattering of the Hebrews, uh, when Jerusalem was sacked in 70 AD, they continued to speak Hebrew by evidence of John, who had wrote revelations after that time, still speaking and understanding Hebrew. So that's Revelation 16 and 16. Since, since those times, the Hebrew, the Hebrews who inhabited Judah that fled into Africa, this is what the writer is saying, continue to have influence on their already influenced language. They continue to see colonization and captivity under the Arabs, Ishmaelites, and Edom or Edomites. And we know who the Ishmaelites are. We know who the Edomites are. As, oh, by the way, vocab says, well, the Edomites have done away with, that's his answer to the Edomites. So you don't got to worry about it. Not the Edomites. Give me one, name me one Edomite that after 70 AD. Well, I can name you a whole bunch of them. I can, I can uh, mention the whole Herodian family because they were the ones that defeated the, uh, remember, uh, 70 AD, when the Romans sacked it, it was also the personal army of uh, the Herodian dynasty that attacked them too. So guess what? They were fighting on the side of the Romans. That was really their war. They wanted to destroy the Israelites. But mainly it was Rome, it was Rome because they wanted the money. They wanted, they, they was taxing the hell out of them when they defeated them and they fled and they killed the, killed the ones that stayed. Um, they uh, sacked the uh, the uh, the treasury, which is uh, which is part of the temple, and um, that's the fulfillment of uh, when the abomination that maketh 
desolate enters and then flee ye to the mountains. The abomination that maketh desolate, desolate. The abomination are the Edomites because they they had no Romans. They had no business going into the temple, and uh, that was under the command of uh, a Titus. I always go into this. The son of Vespasian. They took the money. They and the, the brother, or younger brother, Domitian had a. Uh, and by the way, Domitian was the last Edomite Roman ruler. After that, you had all Jake. Rule Rome. Didn't start with no September Severus in 193 AD. So what they he had built a um honorary arc or arch uh to his brother. And on that arch, you see um arc or arch, however you pronounce it. You know, arc is is the correct word. Um, anyway, um, you have like an arc, uh, L welding. It's called arc welding, and it and when you when you use a, the the welding gun, you see like a uh, a strike of of like lightning or whatever light that forms an arc. As a result of these captivities, there are different age accents among the Hebrew speakers, and you'll find the mixture of Arabic words, which Arabic uh, Ishmaelites, they, they originally spoke Hebrew words and Hebrew words uh, being spoken spoken amongst the Hebrew speakers. Now known as the Bantu people of Africa. East and South Africa Bantus Hebrew uh, Hebrew uh, tribes have more of an Arabic influence due to the East African slave trade. And remember, the Arabic is a form of Hebrew. Instead of saying Abba for father, they'll say Abu. Instead of saying Bun for son, they'll say Ibn. Or instead of saying, they'll, they'll say Sha. Uh, Salam instead of Shalom or Shalom. Slave trade. So you'll find more Arabic words in their, lang in, in their language. Uh, so not every alleged Bantu word found in the Bantu dialects today of, of those in East and South Africa, African, Africans, African regions are actually ancient Hebrew, right? Because you got the JJ to speak a different dialect of Hebrew because when you listen to him, you can pick up words. Uh, and by the way, uh, High Priest Ariah was able to speak to them, and especially Shalomar, the brother named Shalomar. He was actually he can actually hold a full on conversation with a a small hat. Ariah could do too. My I did know some too. I was able to understand a lot of their words, but it was the brother Shalomar. Um. He 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 can he can speak fluent um, ancient Lashwan Kodash, then he can turn around and speak to a uh, a JJ and have a conversation. He can write their language because he he I think his parents I'm almost positive his parents he came up as a child so he already knew the Hebrew so he picked up he he shot past Aria Aria was a teacher he became a better he became like the top. Hebrew teacher in Israel. Some words are actually Arabic words, which are Hebrew. Arabic came from Hebrew because the Ishmaelites were Hebrews that they picked up over time, while others are truly ancient Hebrew words. Also in West Africa, most of the Israelites are, and you got Israelites in East and North Africa. That's, that's one of the places we fled to. The continent of Africa. Not every alleged Bantu word is ancient Hebrew in origin, since they're already been influenced by the Chaldean words of old and recently made up words to accommodate the new 
English language, right? The lang English is the bastard language, a bastard, a bastard tongue. The pure language of the earth is the Hebrew inside joke. They came into, yeah, the, the English is a mixture of German, Latin, and some words are in the Hebrew, like sabbatical. A contact with like computer, computer for computer. You'll also find the natural uh, changes that, like um, the small hats, they'll say for television, television is, uh, what is it, uh, C-Box, which is, uh, I forget how you say box. I believe it's Taba, Ra'ataba, C-Box. Um, but they say, They'll say television, but in a with a like a sort of a Hebrew uh, uh, dialect. So some of those Hebrew words, the JJs, are like English words that they kind of, you know, when they would speak it, it would be in their dialect or accent. A time with languages called Semitic drift. Look that up. Wherein the meaning of the words undergo a shift in meaning due to its usage in everyday conversation. Hence, you'll find ancient Hebrew root words have meanings that may not, that may not have had in ancient times through, you, through usage among the people. Yeah, because they do mention, let me do this. There's a lot of information here. There's a lot of information, a lot of solid information. The Bantu languages are dialects of ancient Hebrew. The root, the root language of the Bantu dialects is the is the Igbo, which is means Hebrews, a language of Nigeria, which is least affected by foreign influence among the Bantu dialects. Bantu dialects is Hebrew. Shal Salama, Mayim, the Igbo dialect being the... And then, of course, you had the Bantu speaking the various Africans, which are Israelites, and the various regions of the continent of Africa. Their dialects were a little different. Like here in America... You got all people that live down south and they'll use words that Jacob here in the north don't understand. You know? My 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 people, um, my family for the most most part are from the south. Um, I had a lot of friends from the south. So when they speak, and then even in the south and in, in the Midwest, you got various different dialects of the southern, they call it the southern drawl. Uh, the Igbo uh, dialect being the source of Bantu dialect of the Bantu dialect is why the ancient Hebrew root words are pro pro predominantly seen in the Igbo dialect as opposed to the other Bantu dialects which have been more affected from migration and colonization when the other nations took over these people, ultimately the slave trade. When it, remember, when the slaves came, the black African slaves, so to speak, came over here, the language that they spoke was Hebrew. Um, now, in the movie Roots, they were saying that they spoke Arabic, which, I mean, Arabic is a, is a dialect of Hebrew. Remember, uh, Arabic, the Ishmaelites spoke Arabic, which the Ishmaelites um, are Hebrews, first son of Abraham. The Hebrew language has been affected by captivity and migration since the days of judgment, wherein you find different tribal accents among Ephraim and Manasseh. Judges 12, verse 6. And I already know what that is, Judges 12 and 6.
See if this comes up. Judges 12 and 6. <sighs> then said they unto him, Say now, Shibboleth. And he said, Sibboleth. For he could not frame to pronounce it right. Then they took him and slew him at the passage of Jordan, and there fell at and there fell at that time of the Ephraimites forty and two thousand. Right, you know what I gotta do? Let me come up here. I'll start the first verse. Then I'll close. And the men of Ephraim gathered to, together, the, gathered themselves together, and went uh, northward and said unto uh, Javith, Javitha, Wherefore passest thou over to fight against the children of Ammon? We know who the Ammonites are, and did not call us to go with thee. We will burn thine house upon thee with fire. And ja and ja Japheta said unto them, I and I and my people were at great strife with the children of Ammon. And when I called you, which were Ephraimites, ye delivered me not out of their hands. You know what I'm gonna do? Let me do this. Let me do this here. It's a ya. Yeah. Yapathak, Yapathak. Yapathak means to open, and Yah means he, he opens. A son of Gilead and a concubine and judge who defeated the Ammonites. So we're in Judges 12. After the victory, because of a vow taken before the battle, he sacrificed his daughter as a burnt offering. So he went off. Ain't that a bitch? A city in Judah. Let's come back over here. Where am I? Okay, let me come back. Okay, and Jab uh, Jabbath uh, said unto them, the Ephraimites, um, I and my people were at great strife with the children or the sons of Ye uh, Ammon. And when I called you, he delivered me not out of their hands. And when I saw that they delivered me not, I put my life in my hands and passed over against the, the children of Ammon. And Yahweh delivered them unto my hand. Therefore, then are ye come up unto me this day to fight against me. So what the hell is wrong with you Ephraimites? Then Yabatak, that's how you say it in Hebrew, he is ho he, he is open. We gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim. A par a par a We always talk about the battle against Benjamin. Well, you had Ephraim and uh, 
you had other tribes fight each other, go to war with each other. And the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, ye Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim. What kind, what kind of bullshit is this? And the Ephraimites and among the Manassites, because they were neighbors to the Ephraimites. And the, and the Gileadites, now, if I'm not mistaken, they have to be Benjamin. The Gileadites are also Benjamin. <coughs> Let's find out. Let's look at the word Gilead, Gileadites. I'm positive they're Benjamin. Scripture said, prove all things. Gilead. Okay, then that's got to be uh, the land of the Reubenites. Yeah, that's got to be the land of the Reubenites. Let me try this. See if this comes up. Okay. Send me right back to Numbers 32. Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of uh, Jaz. Jaza and the land of Gilead that behold the place behold the place was a place uh, for cattle so the, the Gilead was uh, possession of uh, of, uh, Ru of uh, Reuben because Reuben Gad uh, what is it Reuben Gad Manasseh <clears throat> Reuben Gad mainly. So that was uh, Reuben, not Benjamin. Okay. So these were tribes fighting against each other. Four verse again. Jen Yapathak gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought with Ephraim, and the men of Gilead smote Ephraim because they said, Ye Gilead, Gilead uh, dites of fugitives of Ephraim among, among Ephraim. So that's another example of uh, is, is the tribes going to, going, going to war against each other and among them and among the Manassites, which were neighbors of Reuben. Those are the three. You had Reuben, Gad, Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh. Those are the three warrior tribes. Ephraim wasn't so much of a warrior tribe. 
and the Gileadites took the pa uh, passages of uh, Jordan before the Ephraimites. And it was so that when those Ephraimites, which were escaped, said, let me go over that the men of Gilead said unto them, Are thou an Ephraimite? If he said nay, then said they unto him, Say now, like if they say, No, I'm not an Ephraimite. So they said, Well, say, showing you that the Mamoni tribe there was different dialects. How many of y'all knew that? Then said they unto him, Say now, and I'm going to read in the, in the Hebrew, Shib, Shiboleth. And, and he said, which was an Ephraimite, Siboleth. For he could not frame to pronounce it right dialects. Then, then they took him and slew him at the passage of Jordan. And there fell out the time of the Ephraimites, 40 and 2,000. So let me go into these. Let me go into the actual Hebrew. So let's look up this word, which is shab sha shabalach shabalath shabalath. Let's see what that means. Shabalath. A uh, flowing stream, air, head of grain as growing cluster. Shabal, Shabal. Flowing skirt, train. So Shabal, Shabal, Shabalath. Let's come back over here. Shabalath. He said, say Shabal Shabalath. Where is it? They said unto him, say now. Shaba Shabalath. And he said, <laughs> this is how he said it. Sabalath. Let's click on that. So I'm gonna test. I'm gonna test you, Ephraimites. I'm gonna see if y'all really. I'm a Ephraimite. You might be a Simeonite. So, so they say these two words. Just having a little fun. So they said. They said. Um. They said. Uh. They said. Uh. Sabalath. Sabalath. Which is an ear or grain of wheat, which is pretty much the same because it goes back to what. Shabalath. The pronunciation was different. Flowing stream, right? Shabal, which is like train. Something that flows, a river flows. So they knew that. They said any of these people, we're going to see if they're even, but they're going to lie because they don't want to get put to death. So we're going to ask them to say, say this word. If they, if they pronounce it the wrong way, they uh they they're Ephraimites, so kill them. So you did have, and then brothers, certain you know what's funny? You, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a little a joke. A certain like um uh uh the elder um uh, out of Chicago, the the head uh out of Chicago, which is uh uh which is Malcolm, uh, and like if he mentions. Orion Blob's name, he'll say he'll, he won't say it right, and we kind of laugh at it, you know. You know, we still love him, but it was how do he say? He says, "Uh, how does he say it?" It's Orion Orion Lob. He said, "Ryan Ryan Lob." I think he says Ryan Ryan Lob. I forget how he says it. He'll say Apostle Ryan 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 Lob instead of Orion. Arayam, Arayam Lab, Arayam Lab, Lion's Heart. He'll say, uh, 
Ryan Lob. I said, oh, uh, he'll say it different, but it's a, it's a dialect. Now, if you remind him, he'll say it correct, of course, but he frames it different from, uh, from out of his mouth. Okay, so could he be an Ephraimite instead of a Reubenite? We don't know. <laughs> but but he's he, but he's an Israelite. So that shows you even certain brothers, they like they'll they'll say Yahweh. They'll say a, a brother, the brother, the friend of the prophet, he'll say, he'll say Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, but then when he recites the prayer, he'll say it wrong. He'll say uh He'll, he'll recite a prayer, he'll, he'll, like a blessing to the Most High. But so when he says, recites the prayer, it's off. But that's all right, because we know he can say it right, because he opens up by saying, Yahweh and Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. But then when he recites the prayer, it, it, he doesn't say it right. So it's, pra it's practice, you know? But this proves to you that we had dialects different dialects and what do you say what do you say uh shabalath or sabalath it both goes to the root word shabal shabal which means uh flowing <clears throat> like a stream flows <clears throat> so anyway i don't want to make this long but here you have it. I'll leave the link in the description box. Right, because it says from the influence of Jew some Jews learning Chaldean during the Babylonian captivity. Now, I'm going to say this. A lot of uh, well, you got um, a lot of uh, people you know, that woke up to Israel they don't want to get into the, uh, the Hebrew because we used to teach Hebrew. I used to put up Hebrew lessons and uh, Apostle Apostle Ryan Lob, Rum Lob, <laughs> Rum Lover, uh, Ryan Lob used to put up a lot of Hebrew uh, videos and um, Monagon, he still puts up Hebrew. And then when we put up like Hebrew videos, hardly nobody, you make a video on something and it'll be, you know, over a thousand views or whatever, 800 views, whatever the case may be. Then you put the Hebrew, do a Hebrew lesson, you might get 50 views. Because nobody wants, nobody wants to be disciplined enough to really learn that Hebrew. So a lot of times brothers will come to us, or you, well, mostly brothers, and they'll say, could you break this down, break that down? Because they don't want to go through the uh, uh, go, go, reading and going into this word, then going to the root word. And see, that's why, you know, my belief is uh, the leader of the uh, of the a uh, IUIC he 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 dismisses the Hebrew because it's because it's it's you can't be lazy with the Hebrew. There's a lot of work going into the Hebrew, going into root words, and um. So his thing was, and and like you can go twenty plus years. He did he did the the video breaking down the what was it. Uh, Name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, along with Banyamian. Now, if you go to the Hebrew, it says this. Now, if you go to this book and see a scholar, he quoted the Hebrew too. So that's the way you said, because he was thinking like a scholar. So he dismissed the he whole Hebrew. He don't really don't know the Hebrew because he because he was lazy when it came to the Hebrew, and that's a, and that's a fact. Because every once in a while he'll play with the Hebrew. He'll 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 uh he'll say something bad about the Hebrew. Like a nigga jump up and say Yahweh. Or he'll he'll say uh uh like they'll say um they want to make a doctrine out of the Hebrew. No, the Hebrew is part of the doctrine. If you really want to get into these scriptures, you got to think like a scholar. You got to go into the Hebrew word and to the Greek word. So he doesn't want to do that. So he's not sure whether the name is is the way you pronounce the name is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. So he said, well, we ain't going to pronounce that word. We're going to say Mosai and Christ. They're lazy. They're lazy. The scriptures speak about uh, uh, you know, the uh, the follow the the, the, fo the followers follow the lead, leader. Um, I went through that the other day. I can't believe I can't think of it. Uh, 
not going to try to look. I went through it the other day. Is it? I know it's the 12th verse. Oh, let me do it this way. Let me do it this way. And I just went through it. Okay, let me do it this way. Bear me for a minute. I'm incognito right now, so you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so let me do this. Um, bear me for a minute. Bear me for a minute here. Let this thing come up. What the hell happened? Okay, 29 and 12. I knew it was in the 12th verse. I knew it was in Proverbs, but I wasn't sure what the chapter was. And I went through it. Yeah, I think I did it on the video. So let me do this. Bring this up. I'm I'm gonna read it in the uh, in the um, come back over here. I go to the blue letter. Yeah, bottom line is uh, Bishop Nathaniel became lazy, and he's trying to get back into it. That's why uh, the 2023 Passover he came in on the horse, and the name was put out there, General Netanyahu God. That's the old, that's what we used to call him. General, not Netanyahu, but Netanyahu God. That was the name that was given to him. He was a third Netanyahu, so to speak. So he's, he just, he's gotten old and lazy. He doesn't want to research. Uh, that's why he doesn't know all the scriptures. And, that, and that's just a fact. He couldn't break down uh, uh, Daniel 11 chapter if his life depended upon it and he knows that and he's mad he hates us you hate me if a ruler hearken to lies all his all his servants are wicked so that whole IUIC group are a bunch of wicked Negroes now are they elect I hope there are it says if a ruler hearken to lies you don't got to look up the word lie. If he says that the new moon is a full moon, that's a lie. If he says that, uh, what else did he say? Oh, you can you can uh, only have one wife on this side. If if you if you have an extra wife, that's fornication, that's adultery, which is another lie. Um. The lake of fire is a burning pit of eternal spiritual hell. The two-thirds of Israel are going to sleep for a thousand years. Then when they wake up, they're going to be dumped right into hell. That is a lie. Septimius Severius became the first Israelite Roman Caesar or emperor in 193 um, AD. That is a lie. The MOTB or the mark of the you know what is 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 sin in all of its forms, whether it be political or religious. 
That is another lie. So that 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 shows you that 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 whole group, the IUIC, are wicked. They're wicked people. It says if a ruler, he's a ruler, right? He came in on a horse. <laughs> somebody, you had an event. Somebody coming on a horse. He must he he must run shit, right? If a ruler hearken to lies, he's listening to lies. All his servants, his followers, are wicked. So one of the brothers said, the Levite brother said, Bishop Nate's spirit is in all your spirit. Well, what spirit is he in? He's in a spirit of lies. So all of y'all are a bunch of liars, man. And that, and like I said, that group is going to be broken up. That group is going to be broken up. And if there's any of the elect in there, they're going to come out of there. And I hope there is. I think I'm sure I hope, hope there is. Okay, I was going to go. Uh, oh, let me go to the NLT. See what the NLT says. If a ruler pays attention to lies, all his advisors will be wicked. Let me try that. NIV. NIV. If a ruler listens to lies, all his all officials become wicked because they're following him. Let's try it in the uh let's see where else we can go. Let's go to revive standard version. If a ruler listens to, to falsehoods, all his officials will be wicked. So you're following a wicked guy because he follows lies. And he can't say, well, if the most high, you know, show we the most high did show you through GMS. So you keeping them lies going, and 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 the and the karagma, the MOTB, when it comes to when it fully comes to pass, it's going to hit you right in the face, and we're going to see what your followers are going to do. Anyway, with that, I'm going to say shalom.